I'm going to get started here. I'm gonna, today I'm going to be talking about uh, two uh, OWASP tools that helps with penetration testing coverage. So good afternoon, everyone. So my, my name is Ken Prohl. I, am, I wear two hats. I'm the CTO for CodeDX. Uh, CodeDX is a system that allows you to bring together all of your application security testing activities, so static analysis, dynamic analysis, code reviews, all into a central console. We have a, a booth outside, and we can provide some more information on that. I'm also a principal investigator for Secure Decisions. Secure Decisions does research and development in the area of application security. Um, we have some contracts with the Department of Homeland Security, and the tools I'm going to talk about today were funded through the DHS. Uh, CodeDX itself was also funded initially through DHS, and then we uh, trans transitioned that into a commercial product. Secure Decisions is a division of Apply Visions. That's the parent company. It's been around for over 30 years. They do custom software development. I'm based in New York. I am the project lead for the two projects I'm going to talk about today, Code Pulse and Attack Surface Detector. I've been in software development for, for over 20 years. I started out doing C++ development and most recently being uh, helping people develop more secure software. So a quick uh, agenda. I'm going to talk a little bit about the tools from a high level, um, talk about uh, the white height penetration tester, what the typical workflow is like, and we're going to talk a little bit about the attack surface and, and what that means and how these tools can help with that. So the two tools, we're going to go into depth on that. OS Code Pulse, we're going to talk about the challenges it addresses, how it works, provide a, a short demo, and then the attack surface detector, um, just going through, you know, what's, what's its purpose and, and give you some highlights of the features. And finally, wrap up where to learn more information and, and do some Q&A. I uh, hope that, you know, after this talk, you'll be able to see how these tools can help make black box penetration testing less opaque. All right, so an overview, the, the two projects uh, are Code Pulse and Attack Surface Detector. Uh, I've been to several talks where, you know, a lot of projects are kind of really early on. These, these are pretty mature projects. They're both OS projects, open source, fully, freely available. Code Pulse has been around for about four years. We just recently made some, uh, a lot of improvements to it. It's basically a way to instrument an application while it's being tested and get a sense for how much code coverage you're getting. Um, the attack surface detector is also an OWASP project. We actually collaborated with Denim Group initially on this effort through the DHS contract, extending on some of the work that they've done, and that helps you figure out the attack surface that's exposed in the application. We're going to go into more depth about that. The output of that can be used to precede tools like Zap and Burp so that it can have a better um, understanding of the application and do a more thorough testing. And we actually use the attack surface now within Code Pulse, and I'll demonstrate that as well. So these two um, are, are working together. All right, so um, white hat penetration testing, that's the core users that we're, we're addressing, uh, also known as ethical hacker, hackers or you know, OWASP speak. They're the, the breakers, the ones that go in and try and uh, attack an application. Anyone here consider themselves a white hat pen tester? Okay, awesome, cool. Um, so, you know, you have a little, some disadvantages, right? You, your job is to find all of the vulnerabilities where, you know, a hacker just has to find one. And you, you have limited time compared to what the hackers have out there. Uh, and if you're working closely with the development team, it's hard to keep, keep up with them, right? They're developing code uh, really rapidly, and um, that's a challenge. So there's a few advantages that you can have if you have access to the bytecode or the source code. Uh, these tools can help out with that. And I'll also talk about some ways around that if you don't have direct access to the source code. Anyone here familiar with Zap? Okay, cool, cool. Burp Suite. I see these are really uh, popular penetration testing tools. They can be used manually or automated. Um, a lot of the solutions I'm going to talk about today can also work with tools like WebInspect or Acunetics or um, NetSparker. Um, or even you know, doing strict manual reviews, or if you have an outside uh, penetration testing organization that is uh, doing testing for you, you want to get an idea of how much coverage you're getting, these tools can help out with that. So let's talk a little bit about the, the, the typical workflow for a penetration tester. You have a, a web application that's probably accessing some database where you have your sensitive information. 
Uh, as a, a pen tester, um, typically the first step is to try and figure out how to authenticate. You know, you have to know uh, the different users and the different user roles that are associated with the application. If you don't have the right credentials, you're not going to really get too far with being able to test the application. And then do endpoint enumeration. So a lot of times you'll manually map out the application, go to every single link on the page, go through the forms, go through multiple step um, um, forms like you know, checkout processes have multiple steps so that you can build up that site map in order for the tools to perform their testing and for you to do more uh, thorough manual testing. Uh, then typically go through the automated spidering and crawling process. So tools like Zap and Burp, you can just point them at, at the website. It'll automatically figure out all of the different endpoints. And you know, the better you do that manual mapping, the, the better the tool will be able to do to, to crawl out further. Then you can do brute forcing or forced browsing. So this is a way of the tools trying to find unlinked endpoints in the application. Basically, there's a, a dictionary of, of different um, keywords that it'll try and put on the URLs that you know, other apps might use. Um, but a lot of times, this is you know, hit or miss if you're going to be able to find one of these, one of these hidden endpoints. From this endpoint enumeration process, out pops the attack surface. So the attack surface is how an attacker can get into the application to get to the sensitive data that you're trying to protect. And once the attack surface is, is out there, then you can go through the vulnerability discovery process doing passive, active, or, or fuzzing. Um, let's talk a little bit about the attack surface a little bit more. I'm going to use a, a house as an, an analogy. So if you look at a, a house, you know, how can someone get in into your house? You know, maybe they'll, they'll try the, the front door, uh, the side door, they'll look for open windows. So these are ways of getting in and getting to sensitive information. With a web application, that's typically the URLs that the application is exposing, uh, like a, a login form. And depending on you know, how, how that login form is used, the attacker can get into, into, into the application in different ways. But the, you know, the open window is just kind of the starting point for getting at the sensitive information. Um, there's different paths that one can take through uh, a house or an application to get to that, that particular area of interest. For web applications, though, this is much more complex, right? There's, there's no, it's not a, a single floor. Um, much more complex. You have many floors and being able to you know, for if you look at this as an application, how can you know how much coverage you're getting and, how, and where you're going within the application when it's this complex? Uh, so this is why we, we developed uh, OWASP Co Code Pulse. If you look at uh, Wikipedia under Web Application Security Scanner, you'll find this. It wasn't written by me. Um, the, the penetration tester should look at the coverage of the web application or its attack surface to know if the tool was configured correctly or was able to understand the web application. And this is really what Code Pulse is, is aiming to address, being able to measure how much coverage you're getting during your penetration testing activities. A, a lot of times, if you, you know, you're just looking at what you can see, you don't know what you can't see. So Code Pulse helps with several different things. It'll tell you if you reached all of the application. Um, as you're doing actions within the application, you can see which parts of the source code were executed. So similar to the house analogy where you're, um, you know, performing different ways of trying to, to get in and how you can get to different, different parts. The same thing you can do in, in real time to be able to see how much uh, coverage you're getting and where you're going within the app based on the actions that you're performing. You'll be able to compare different tools to see which ones are getting better coverage. Um, if you have multiple testers that are doing testing, you can compare how well they're doing and, or which parts of the app they're, they're testing more. Uh, most important, it helps you tune your test coverage, um, your testing tools. So a lot of the tools need to be tuned for the application or, or just tuned for, for themselves to get better coverage. You can use that for this. And then communicate the testing coverage to others. So, you know, helps with coverage gaps, uh, tuning the applications and the tools, and then communicating the results to others. So Code Pulse is primarily a code coverage tool. Now, there's other solutions out there that will be able to check code coverage. But this was really developed specifically for penetration testing activities. Uh, the other tools are primarily static, where you, you, you do all your testing, and then you come back and you look at kind of a flat list of what was covered. But Code Pulse is a real-time and very visual presentation of the application under testing. And uh, you know the old adage that a, a picture is worth a thousand words is 
is what is something true for what we're doing with, with Code Pulse. And it allows you to really see the whole application in a single view. So in, in a nutshell, Code Pulse is a, a real-time code coverage visualization tool for penetration testing activities. So how Code Pulse works, and you have your penetration tester looking at an application, in this case it's, it's WebGoat, and that's a black box perspective. You, you can't really see what's going on inside. With the Code Pulse agent, you install this within the application. We have support for Java and .NET. And what this will help you provide is real-time code coverage information. So turning that black box into a glass box so you can actually see what's going on inside. So that provides transparency, it provides feedback into your testing, and helps with tuning your testing to get better coverage. So this is a picture of Code Pulse. Each, uh, each box here represents a method within the, the application, and it's grouped by the classes and the namespaces that are involved. And as you test the application, the boxes will highlight, and just like in, in the house scenario, you'll you be able to see where within the application you're, you're going during your testing activities. So this is kind of like a blueprint for your software. So let's look at a, a coverage scenario. Um, I took WebGoat and OAuth Zap, and I was monitoring it during my um, testing activities with Code Pulse. I launched Zap, I pointed it at WebGoat URL, and let it do its spidering, let it do an active scan, and this was the coverage I got. Um, Yeah, just within a box. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, yeah, there's one box here, one box here, one box here. Um, and if you look at the tooltips on this, you can see that it's the you know index JSP, uh, the login JSP, and the login controller. So because I didn't I didn't log in to WebGoat Zap, you know, did all its testing, ran for you know a few minutes. You know, you might think that you, you, you tested the whole application, but really you didn't, you didn't do anything at all. Uh, you, just, you just tested the login page and you weren't able to break that. Uh, so then I then, said, then I, I went and I, I logged in through Zap, so now Zap knows how to log in, and I ran the spider and ran the active scan, and this was the map that was generated. So I got, you know, I did a better job, got some more coverage. Then I did manual browsing. I went through WebGoat, went through a bunch of different forums, uh, and then now you can see that the picture's getting better, right? so I'm getting a lot more coverage. Uh, and I could still look for areas that I may have missed, like in here there's a, uh, in this admin class, there's a refresh database screen. I, I never, never went through that, that particular action, so Zap wasn't able to, to get into that part of the thing. So looking at the you know, overall results of these, uh, you know, this is the first scan, second scan, and third scan. So now visually you can see that uh, I'm getting better coverage just with this tool. You could also use it to compare manual and automated scanning. So within Code Pulse, you can have uh, different recordings. And in here, basically everything that's black is saying that you know, it was found both by manual and automated testing. And the things that are in green were just found during my manual scan and then the things that were in blue are just found by automated scans. So it allows you to compare different testing approaches and kind of get, get an idea where there's overlap. Uh, you can compare tools, so maybe you know, running two tools or, or evaluating tools, you can see how well they're, they're, they're performing. So in this case, it's the same kind of thing where the black is found by both and um, then the colors represent what was found by the individual tools. Compare testers, if you're hiring an outside firm or you have an internal testing team and you want to see how much coverage they're getting, you can instrument the application and, and see that. So now I'm going to go to a live demonstration. Here I'm going to use Contosa University, which is a sample application from Microsoft. It's built on the ASP.NET framework. And um, so this is Code Pulse. I've given Code Pulse the binaries and the source code for the Contosa U application. You don't need the source code, but if you provide the source code, you'll have some additional uh, information that I'll, I'll show you here. On the left is the application inventory. This is all how the application is broken up into different namespaces. We also integrate dependency check, and so you can drill on that. You can see any dependencies that this application makes use of. 
uh, that can be used full for a penetration tester to then try and exploit those vulnerabilities like the Apache struts or some other vulnerability that is known. As a pen tester, you can go in there and try and uh, exploit that. So here I've highlighted the, um, the main package for Contosa University. And you can see, you know, again, all these boxes are all the methods and they're grouped by the, where they are in the application. You see this whole box here is all migration classes, so that's probably not of interest and that's not something that can probably be touched from the outside. Um, some stuff getting cut off again, but. Uh, and then you see here that these little icons, this indicates what we have identified as the attack surface. So this is utilizing the other tool I was talking about, the attack surface detector. Um, so you can highlight w what are the entry points, what are the open windows for this application that an attacker can get into. Um, all right, so I'm going to now instrument the application. And Code Pulse is saying, you know, do you want to associate it with this particular project? I've gone in and did that. And I'm just going to bring up the browser here. Let me get rid of, let me, let's focus on just the uh, controller package, which primarily is the attack surface for this application. So IIS is gonna wake up here, and as the application is loaded, you'll see some things highlight in real time. So, you know, we just, we just hit some methods here, and this is the, the home controller index method. So this particular application, you can create the departments and um, instructors and students. You can add and delete and stuff like that. So as I interact with the application, in real time, you'll see things start to highlight. Um, I'm actually going to start a recording. We'll call this um, manual jam. So we're going to look at the, the courses, and you'll see here this, this kind of represents all of the courses methods. And as I start interacting with this application, I can, you'll see the, the coverage start improving. So we're going to add a new course to this college called AppSec. It's a three credit course under computer science department. And boom, so now I, I've, I've hit some of those methods. We're going to Go in and let's change the, we'll edit it, we'll make it a four credit class instead of three. And let's get rid of calculus, that wasn't fun. And we'll get that. All right, so now we're getting some more coverage. Uh, I can look at the details. So, so pretty good here. So now we, we've covered just about all of the methods, although we missed one and that's the update course credits method. Now this is, this I didn't put it in there, this is from the Microsoft application, this is an unlinked endpoint um, that you wouldn't be able to find just by navigating the application. Um, so I could actually go in here and then, because I, I know it's called um, update course credits, right, so you see some that index there. This basically allows you to change the number of credits, you can multiply it by two. Now I've gotten full code coverage. Although, that's just saying at the method level. We now have the ability to go into the uh, line level information. So let me get back out here and look at the, the edit method. So. <laughs> Um, this is to edit a particular course. You see we, we hit some lines here, but we got five out of seven statements. So let's try and improve on that. So we see, let's see, go back to departments. Uh, actually, it's courses and edit. So you can see up here it takes in parameter, which is the, the ID, which is what it's looking for here. Now, if it doesn't find the ID, it's going to go through a different code path. Um, so if I put in 1,000, um, which I know isn't an ID, that's going to come up as null. So now we're entering different parts of the application 
and it's, this is a known, it's going to throw an error saying it couldn't find that. Um, if I put in null, you're going to see that it's going to try and find that I ID, and it's not going to find it, and then in real time, you'll see that that information gets highlighted in the source code. Stop this recording and start another one where this time I'm going to run Zap against the application. So I have Zap already set up to connect to this particular app and we're going to spider it. So you see that you know Zap is going through its spidering process. A whole bunch of boxes are lighting up, and um, you know, again, you can see in real time how much coverage you're getting. And once that's done, which is just about done now, I can stop that recording and now compare that to my manual scan that was done. Um, and you see Zap, you know, Zap found a lot of things. Um, but it wasn't able to find that unlinked endpoint, the uh, update course credit that was found during the, the manual review using the tool. All right, so that's that, that was Code Pulse. Now I'm going to switch over to the attack surface detector, which you saw a little bit in Code Pulse, where you're able to highlight the attack surface part of the application. Uh, so the problem that we're looking to identify is to uh, improve the attack surface, um, you know, particularly the endpoints that are undiscoverable by uh, dynamic tools, unless you're using brute forcing or if you're going through and looking at the source code. Uh, so we have an open source solution that will help uh, identify the uh, attack surface, and that can be used to precede tools like Zap and Burp. Um, so it helps abbreviate the testing process. Again, you don't have to do brute forcing. You don't have to go through a manual code review. It'll help discover unlinked endpoints. So just like we saw in, in that sample application from Microsoft, it has an unlinked endpoint that it would be extremely difficult to find with, with, with other means. Uh, and also optional parameters, like if you have a, a debug parameter that's being added to the application, you'd be able to see that, as well as the data types associated with it. So just by running the attack surface detector, you get all that information about the attack surface. That can then be used to precede tools like Zap and Burp with the attack surface. Um, there's uh, plugins available for, for both of those tools. And then you can also take a look and compare different applications, different versions of applications to see how that application has changed between different um, parts. So how it works, it, it analyzes the source code. So the source code is required. Uh, and from that, it's able to figure out all of the endpoints and the parsing routes for the application and then the parameters that are available. Uh, these are supported frameworks, uh, languages and frameworks, so .NET, Java, Python, Ruby, uh, and it is framework dependent, so th these are the frameworks that are currently supported. It is available today in the OWASP, Zap, and Burp Suite marketplace, so right from within those tools, you can go in and, and add this plugin and then improve your attack surface detection. Once it's installed, this is looking at Burp. You'll have a new tab within uh, Burp and Zap that called the Attack Surface Detector, and then there you can, you know, tell it, uh, give it a zip file of your, your source code. If you want to compare it to another version, you can you can give that here. What you get from that is a list of the endpoints. Uh, this is again using the same Contoso University application. The number of parameters that were detected, whether it was a GET or POST method, and whether it was changed between the, the last version of it. And then on the bottom, you can get details about the particular endpoint. You know, this one was a new one. Um, we have another example where the integer, the ID data type changed from integer to string. Um, another one where a debug parameter was added to the endpoint. And then uh, all that information can get fed into Zap or Burp, so we can improve your sitemap. Uh, and then you can also see we have color coordinated way of seeing you know, whether it was detected by source code, whether it was modified, or whether it was new since the last scan. Uh, so now this allows Burp and Zap to have a more intelligent way of doing its analysis. 
since it's being told a lot more information than it would be able to discover otherwise. So running this against uh, Contosa University, there, you know, there's more, um, after going through the attack surface detector, there's more endpoints that were detected. There's the update course credits again. That was the unlinked endpoint that was found um, during the attack surface detector. Uh, there's a delete and edit um, endpoints that weren't detected, and that was because when I, I ran this, there was no data that was already part of the application, so those endpoints weren't able to be discovered by Zap or Burp. Um, so looking at a comparison, this is a report generated by Burp Suite. Um, you can see, you know, we, before the preceding, these are the number of uh, URLs that were detected in parameters, and then after, just by doing the preceding, we, we were able to improve that and, and find a lot more, um, a lot more endpoints and parameters that now can be tested. And then bringing this back into Code Pulse, we were able to take a look, um, you know, with and without the attack surface detector. Um, so again, the overlap is shown in black, and then the things that were discovered after using the attack surface detector are all shown in blue here. So we're able to visually show that you're able to improve your code coverage by using this technology. And also in Code Pulse, you can see a bar graph of the, uh, the code coverage. And again, looking at the controllers, which is the attack surface, before the attack surface detector preceding got 46%, and then after we were up to 75%. This is a report that was done for a more complex application. So Contosa University is pretty straightforward. Uh, this was a pr proprietary application that we ran um, Burp against. So this was just, just using Burp. This is just using the attack surface detector to um, discover the, the attack surface, and you know, we have found a lot more. And then this last one here is first using the attack surface detector and then going through the, um, the Burp's um, uh, d discovery process and, and what I was able to find. So the, you know, the best way of doing it is to first have the attack surface detector integrated and then go through the crawling and automated scanning from, uh, from the, the dynamic tools. Um, lastly, uh, you know, one of the, the problems with uh, the, the, the tool is that, you know, a lot of times pen testers don't have direct access to the source code. Uh, what we provided is a command line interface that can be used so that you can give this to the person that owns the application. They can run this CLI tool against the application and a JSON file will get generated that just lists out the endpoints and parameters that can then get fed into Burp or Zap. And so they don't have to give you the proprietary source code. They can just give you this um, attack surface discovery file that then can then be used into, into the, uh, Burp and Zap. Uh, well, I'm just going to wrap up and I'll take some questions. Yep. Um, yeah, this is a couple more slides. Where to learn more about these projects? Code Plus Attack Service Detector are both OWASP projects. From there, you can find out all kinds of information uh, about them. They're the GitHub repos, the user guide, and the documentation are all uh, linkable from there. Um, you know, we talked about OWASP app and WebGoat and Dependency Check. Those are all really good OWASP tools that were. Uh, demonstrated today or integrated with the technology. The Contosa University application that I use for the demonstration um, is, is shown here. And finally, a uh, link to Burp Suite, which was, was highlighted during the demo. And now I'll take questions. I'm really interested in any feedback you guys have. Please reach out to me uh, directly. We can walk through a demo. Uh, I'm at the, the CodeDX booth. We can, we can talk more. Really, really interested in getting, getting feedback from the community. I don't use mic. So you mentioned uh, we, you need the source code to do the uh, surface de detection. Can we just for Java just use a jar file? It's, uh, you have to uh, if the jar file has a source embedded in it, then that would work, yeah. Okay. But it, it, it doesn't. But it doesn't do the like uh, decompile. No, 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 no. That's a good idea. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that's a good, that's a good feedback. Yeah, not now, not currently, but that's a, that's a good idea.
I'll make a note of that. Thank you. No, yeah. <laughs> Uh, hello, thank Hi. you for this talk. That was uh, very nice. Thank you. I have a question. What is the benefit of the a dark surface detector if in the end of the using of code pools you will uh, find out all the entry points? Um. Like you're browsing the applications and you see on the code pools uh, those parts which you are like triggering. So you know that these are the entry points. Mm -hmm. So in the end of using, you will get all this information. Why do you need a surface detector? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're complementary. Um, the you know, the attack surface detector, the nice part about that is you, you can just feed that into Zap and Burp directly. Um, so it's a little bit more, more automated in that way. Where Code Pulse, it's more interactive, and you, you're exploring around and trying to improve your coverage that way. Uh, and Code Pulse does require that you instrument the application in order to do that, co that, that testing coverage, which is... Um, Oh, yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you, thank yeah. you. Hi, I, hey. I have mainly two questions. So, yeah. yeah, first of all, they're really cool project. Cool, thank, thank you. Thank you for uh, contributing to us. Uh, so the first question is, uh, if you notice, like Burp and SAP, they're moving towards continuous integration, yeah, yeah, yeah. continuous testing. Do you have any plans to move these yeah. two projects for a continuous integration? Sure, that's a good question. Yeah, that's, that's probably the, the highest thing uh, on the, the roadmap is to bit better within the automated process and CI process. Mm -hmm. uh, the attack surface detector is a little bit easier in that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can uh, you use that CLI tool, you know, as part of your CI process to show the endpoints and the differences in the endpoints between them and feed that into Burp and Zap. But we're looking to make that a little bit more seamless. Mm -hmm. uh, and then certainly with Code Pulse as well. Um, right now it's more uh, hands-on and interactive, and we're looking to make it work in an in a automated yeah, way, I guess. Yeah. Second question is like you mentioned about there is a Department of Homeland Security funding for so is that for both projects and yeah. is there any uh, if you don't mind can you let us know the scope is there any license restriction for any companies to use or any kind of mess behind these <laughs> and, uh, problems? Yeah, they're, they're, they're both uh, funded through the Department of Homeland Security. They're Science and Technology Directorate under the Cybersecurity Division. Mm -hmm. Um, we all we are working on other projects as well. So if you check out the Secure Decisions website, you'll see some other mm -hmm. other projects that we have in the area of application security. Mm -hmm. Both of these projects are open source. Code Pulse is a, a Apache license, and the Attack Surface Detector is the Mozilla public license. Apache, so yeah. Both are Apache. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Hi, it was really interesting uh, set of tools, and I wanted to ask what kind of support would there be for single page applications since there's not so much crawling that has to be done? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I, you know, for Code Pulse, you, you'd be able to see it down to the, the, the method level, so you'd be able to, you know, look in more depth. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how the, the, the attack surface detector would work on uh, single page apps, but I, I know that, like, for uh, any web APIs and all that stuff is all is all supported by by the attack surface detector. So, okay, yeah. thank you. Thanks. All right, thank you, everyone. <laughs>